I'm sorry. I've been in the middle of moving and getting everything ready and all that stuff, and I'm uh, just very busy. Uh, anyway, um, I wanted to go over the charts with you. Here's Tesla, for example, and I've shorted this, and I've added to the short, and I'm just going to build my short position. And I want to talk a little bit about what something somebody has done that I really don't like them doing. And I've warned them about this many times before, but it doesn't seem to be getting through. And I want it to get through to that person. Um, but anyway, here's Tesla. Here's what I'm looking at. The volume confirms this. I've watched it very closely. And, you know, again, I'll just hold, and it can go all the way up to around 700, and I'll be selling it as it goes higher. The next area that I saw is at 548, and then above there is 627, and then 673, um, 674 about, let's say. And um, that's the 200%, and you see the pattern that I'm looking at. Uh, the volume and so forth. It, this is just an incredibly way hyped, overvalued, and the reckoning is coming. Uh, nobody sees it economically um, right now because it's an election year and money is flowing, especially with the pandemic and all of that. But, um, you know, when the, uh, the party stops and they've had too much to drink, you know, then comes the hangover. <laughs> It might be a very long, uncomfortable hangover, <laughs> and uh, that's what I'm going to be looking for going into next year. So I don't mind holding on to certain shorts. Um, other stocks that I own that uh, I've cut back a great deal, I'm going mostly into cash, I've got to tell you, and uh, there's a reason for this because I see what's going to occur, and I, I'd be more into cash and and. I don't like the idea that I had to go over and exit my silver and, and you know half of my gold, uh, but I had to because of the uh, news and so forth. So we are getting a pullback, and we could get all the way back down to under here, and we you can see it right there it goes up to there. We'll see what happens with it. We could also go up and get all the way up to this target level up here instead. So you know I I just playing it a little bit more cautiously. I was overweighted in this. Now I'm not so much so. I'm still very overweighted in um, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, even if my positions are locked, they're just, I don't get any more profits because it's gone up to the 18,200 level. So I'm sure you get that. But let's talk about Bitcoin and so forth and what it's done and where it's gone. And let's talk about this big air bubble because that's what it is. It's a gigantic air bubble. And in my opinion, it's from the Bitfinex guys. Uh, they are just pushing it as far as they can, creating all the hype that they can. And there are in institutional investors who are looking at this for the long term. But from this level, this 12,000, um, this is all air. And when this comes crashing down, it's going to be ugly. And, you know, it's their Bitfinex guys are going to take their profits. Uh, and one of the things that I'll show you is the, you can see this because of the amount of tether that they, they print. And that's just like free money to them. They can say what they want, but they're using the tether to go over and buy Bitcoin. And imagine having your own money printer where you create your own dollars. Well, that's basically what they're able to do. And I think that's going to cause them a problem in the future because, you know, if the SEC and CFTC uh, now goes after companies like, BitMEX that is in Hong Kong, um, and they don't care about jurisdiction, well, they're, they're going to go after Bitfinex hard, and they're not going to care about jurisdiction. Uh, they're going to be like, no, uh, we're going after you. And they're, the United States is not happy with cryptocurrencies. It views it as a, um, a competitor in, in force, and they're going to go after them at some point. So uh, you know, it, it's a balancing act. Um, the only thing that they're doing is they're trying to mitigate it with because of the amount of interest and uh, people in the institutional side that have gone against them. So now the U.S. government is in a hard position. Um, so the only thing they can do is they can attack the firms that are 
uh, wild west and unregulated and try to rein in the firms that are um, somewhat regulated. And uh, so you're going to see that kind of activity occur in the future. And I, I can almost guarantee that's what's going to that's what's going to happen. But we're in this giant air bubble, and this is going to collapse at some point. And people are going to be like, oh my God, what the hell? When you get people like Macy Williams asked, should I buy Bitcoin? And they're buying Bitcoin for no reason at all. <laughs> but I could be wrong. Let's go over and look at the other side. I could be wrong. What if it, Bitcoin just keeps going up and up and up, making new highs, breaking about 20,000 and and then making even bigger highs from there and onward and upward. Well, um, that would suck because um, I'm going to lose out on the profitability of it. But I, I, I showed you everything that has occurred here. And I, I can tell you through history that things like this don't last. They just don't. And statistically, if I'm going to be right 9 out of, uh, or let's say 19 out of 20 times or 18 out of 20 times, I'm going to go with the 18 times and let the cards lay where they may. I might be wrong, but I have to go with what works and what has always worked or else I wouldn't have the gains that I've had over time, right? Uh, you know, being able to make over 100% or, or ridiculous there, 300% on your net asset value, that means your total, you know, uh, investment portfolio is exceptionally high. And I've done exceptionally well. So I'm going to keep with that. And at some point I might get knocked. Um, you know, uh, nobody's perfect. Uh, but I'm going to go with where the odds are. And I have no choice. I have to. I can't predict the future. I'm not Miss Cleo. I'm not Nostradamus. And the other thing that I, I've stated to certain individuals, never over leverage. How many times do I have to repeat that? Don't over leverage. Don't over leverage. Don't over leverage. Don't go above uh, trying to get extra profits all the time. Uh, and if you have a liquidation value that's somewhere around the all-time highs and so forth, well, why? Why do you? Because uh, I've always stated that I never sell more than I own. And if I did, I would have the, the Bitcoin to cover it to make sure that I wouldn't have any exposure. I don't want that kind of exposure. I never want to get liquidated. If I get liquidated, it's because um, it's a small trade and I wasn't, you know, it, it was just a gamble. Um, but I would never put any real capital uh, in a liquidation situation. That would be stupid. That would just be stupid, just like I'm well diversified. Um, another thing is um, diversification. Stocks, uh, diversified. Uh, metals, uh, diversified. Um, hodl position. I, I have coins that I hodl. I, I basically just add to them every year, like Bitcoin. And I have a certain amount of Bitcoin and, and other coins that I just hold. I don't do anything with them. I just basically hold them and they're in the hodl. Uh, it's like a savings account. So that's diversification once again. Do you understand my point of view? Because you're not always going to be right on any one bet. That's why you never, never, ever put all your eggs in one basket. And that's what I was saying once before, a few weeks ago or a week ago. So, uh, you know, if you do that, then you are to blame and you will suffer the ramifications of that because of your own uh, greed or, you know, uh, you know, it, emotions and uh, just bad calculation. That's just bad logic. Can't do that. Um, you know, that's the one thing that I go against, just like chasing the market. It's, it's just something you don't do. You never over leverage. Uh, you know your, what you're going to lose before, and you know what you're going to gain ahead of time. And um, you go from there. Um, I can't lose anything because I'm not over leveraged. I'm just hedged on my position. So the worst case is that I just don't gain extra profit if it goes in a direction against what I was looking for. And at some point when it does break back down, we'll see. But like I said, I, I believe this to be the Bitfinex people. And they're going to profit very well off of this because they're pushing it as much as they have because it's their business, you know, it's the elevation and so forth. And then when it, they decide to sell the Bitcoin they have and drop it, and then they'll start the game all over again. 
They have too much power still. Uh, until institutions accumulate enough coin outside of them, um, you know, they control the board. So that's the way it is. Anyway, you guys have a happy Thanksgiving and a happy week because that's what we have here. And, uh, you know, um, go enjoy your turkey. Or if you're not from America, you know, um, go and enjoy pre-Christmas. <laughs> anyway, have a great week and I'll talk to you next time.